All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and improve our search feature and introduce a concept called complex querying. And so what we wanna do is jump into our article views and we're gonna go ahead and look at the search view in particular. And now what we wanna do is instead of returning back an object, we actually wanna return back a query set. And so of course, if we are gonna be using query sets, one of the things I wanna do right off the bat is say query set equals to article.objects dot all. And this query set is going to be changed based off of the actual query itself, the actual search query. And so that is going to be a whole nother thing that you already might have an idea of what you could do. And it's something like this title. I contains that query really, really simple Two underscores. I contains and that query. And so the context now is going to be, let's say object list and it's gonna return back that query set. Really, really something that you could use all the time. Now this is a very simple query, but let's go ahead and actually update the template so that that query is actually coming through. And so inside of articles, we'll come back into search. And now instead of if object, we're just gonna go ahead and do a for loop and say for object in object list, just like this. And we'll go ahead and do in four. And of course, now it's going to be if object dot title, very similar to what we did on that home view. But of course, this is just saying if x dot title, but we want to call it object. I think that's a little bit better of a way to designate this in a template. And so we implemented that get absolute URL method in here. Notice that I do not have to call it. I didn't have to execute it. Something I didn't mention before, uh, but that's one of those nice things about using Django templates is a lot of times methods like this, you don't actually have to call. It does it for you. And so now here we are with a new search feature. So let's go ahead and make sure our server is running. Sure enough, it is. And so on, I think any page, we should now be able to search. So if I search hello world, this will only search the titles, right? And it's also showing us our URLs here, which is actually pretty cool. So I have a lot of things in here called hello world, of course. And search results don't look great like this. So we actually want to improve a couple more things. We want to actually just turn this into a list item of some kind. And so what I can do is say a ordered list. So OL, this is a very simple, simple tag inside of HTML. You can call it OL or UL for unordered for just bullets. But I'm just going to go ahead and put numbers in here actually. And so in this for loop, instead of having H1 and all that, what I'm going to have is just a simple link. So a href and set that equal to object dot title. And really that's it. I'm not going to have any preview of the content in this case. And of course the actual link itself is like that. And so now I can actually show quite a bit more results in here and they come out like this. Now, of course, if I am using an unordered list or an ordered list, I need to turn each item in there as a list element itself by doing li. So let's go ahead and separate this out a little bit so it's easier to see. And there we go. And so that is our new item here. And so instead of having it all in some weird jumble like this, I can refresh and now it has some sort of order going on, some sort of numbers in here. So this is pretty cool. So I can actually select one and hey, it's a lot more usable now. Now I actually wanna make this more advanced. So this is still fairly simple. Um, now to make it more advanced, it has to go back into the view itself. And so what we can do is in our query set here, I can actually make this a more complex lookup. And so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and do from django.db.models, we're gonna import Q. So literally a capital Q, Q as in the class of Q. And so right now we've got this simple lookup. So what I wanna do is I'll say lookups equal to, well, Q and then this simple lookup, okay? Just leave it like that and put in this filter of lookups. That's it, just gonna leave it like that and we'll refresh in here with a new search. We'll go ahead and do the office, hit enter. And well, in theory, it is just searching that value. Uh, it also possible that it is not searching that value, which we will check out in a moment, whether or not it is actually doing a query. Um, and so what we should check is that the query is actually not none. So I'm going to go ahead and print out what that query is. So let's go ahead and refresh in here. 
And we should see a query in the print statement. And it's showing me that there is no query. So the reason for this should have something to do with this try block here. Notice that we actually tried to use an integer. Uh, we don't need that anymore. So the original queries, the ones I was doing was actually failing, uh, but now I got rid of that. And really I could just bring this up here and now just say dot get of Q. I no longer need to you know, try and designate it as an integer any longer, especially based off of these complex queries. So I can go ahead and get rid of this altogether and just leave it like that. And so change this to just being simply query and we can get rid of these print statements in here. So now if I save that and do a refresh, now it's actually giving me a correct lookup, right? Which is good. Okay, so the office. Now here's a good example of something that we would want a complex query for. Let's go ahead and create a new article and I'm gonna go back to the home page. We'll create a new article and this time I'm gonna give the title of being the office and say, hello world is my favorite, oh, favorite uh, one. Okay, so now the office two or something like that, um, the office itself has hello world in the content itself or actually in another field. So what these Q lookups do is actually allow us to chain another field together by using the pipe and then adding another kind of lookup. So we come in here and now we can say content underscore underscore I contains. And now this lookup right here is just a more complex lookup. It's looking in two fields now. And so if I search for hello world again, it's now gonna have that office in there uh, at some point, right? And so, it, I mean, it'd also be true if I searched for something like ABC. Let's go ahead and create another article and I'll go ahead and create article and I'll just say hello world again. Um, and then ABC in the content, we'll go ahead and create that article and let's add some gibberish to the title. And then there's ABC in there. So if I search for ABC, it, it now finds that, right? So it's, it's allowing me to have two separate kinds of lookups, which I think is important for any given search. Now, one of the biggest downsides of this is it's really only for this one single model. That is something that's quite a bit more complex that we're not gonna be covering in this series is trying to have a bunch of complex lookups with different models altogether. Now, one of the bad sides of what I have right here is a lot of this logic actually exists in the view itself when it could probably be attached directly to the model itself. So something a little bit more along the lines of QS article dot objects dot search, and then just passing in that query where it essentially does all of these things. Now, that's actually something I will implement next. Um, but overall, hopefully this makes a lot of sense now that we understand query sets and how to do a lot of these searches. Now we have a much more robust article search. <laughs>